In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today we hear the parable of the Good Samaritan. For the times we fail to love, as we are called, we ask God for healing and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you abound in life and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you extend your arms and welcome those in need. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your words are spirit and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, given, uh, give all who for the faith they profess. They are counted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, if only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor it is across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. 
Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wanted to uh, wish to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him uh, and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road But when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler came upon him, who was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged him. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, and took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave it to the innkeeper with the instructions, take care of him. If you spend more than what I've given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was a neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus' listeners must have been surprised by this parable. The Jews looked down upon the Samaritans. But in this story, the Samaritan, not the priest, not the Levite, is the one who treated the injured man with mercy. The Samaritan is the one who loves his neighbor and takes care of him. Many Jews in the time of Jesus shunned Samaritans because they were descendants of the Jews who married people from different ethnic and religious backgrounds. So Jesus must have shaken the scholar of the law and his prejudice when he, uh, the, when he made the Samaritan the good guy in the story. Jesus and his message is clear to each and every one of us. Go and do likewise. Our church fathers saw this parable as more of an example of how we should love our neighbor. While we see Jesus as a good Samaritan, the one who comes to care for each and every one of us. Jesus is the one who finds us half dead by the side of the road. He sees us in our sins, bandages us up, forgives us, and brings them to the church. 
Today, we're being challenged to put the gospel into practice. Last week, we were challenged to be laborers for the Lord. Today, we're being called to love our neighbor, uh, to be moved with compassion. Moses challenges us to return to the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, with all our souls. In the Old Testament, there are 613 different rules and regulations uh, and laws that a person had to do, had to follow to be a good Jew. Today, we hear all these summed up in two, two, two main thoughts or ideas. You shall love the God, Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind. And second, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we strive to uh, live to do this daily, then we'll truly be acting as a disciple of Christ. We'll be living the gospel. Most Jews thought a neighbor meant a fellow Jew, and they had no obligation to love foreigners. In the Bible, the word love is almost never meant as an emotional love, but a charitable love, meaning to wish well for another. A retired Marine told me that he was trained to uh, think uh, of an enemy not as a person, but only by putting someone in a category, an enemy, an opponent, evil, black, white, Asian, thug, gangbanger, criminal, or a threat, can we consider dismissing and mistreating other people? When we see others as a human like us, mistreatment can become more difficult. That is why it's difficult to eat or pray uh, with someone who has hurt us. The tension causes us uh, 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 to leave and not to be reconciled with that person. Our hearts know that we're uh, more alive than, uh, that we're more alike than unlike. This is why we need to pray for an end to violence between all peoples, black and whites, Jews and Muslims, Christians and non-Christians, male and female, when we see everyone, regardless of color, sex, religion, economic status, we see them as a human person. And that is being compassionate. That is be, uh, being a good Samaritan. Jesus challenges us to be a good Samaritan. Jesus is challenging us to get involved. We need to ask, will we help our neighbor? Will we reach out of our comfort zone and cross boundaries we set up uh, uh, and that we sh uh, about who or what uh, we should speak to or not speak to. Will we be good Samaritans that a world desperately needs? Or will we just continue in our own little world echoing the mantra, not my problem, not my job? Will we follow Jesus' advice and go and do likewise? Today at Mass, let us thank the Lord for having treated us with dignity and respect. Let us thank the Lord for treating us with mercy. Then ask him to show us how we can be a good Samaritan, how we can reach out and share our love with others, to be compassionate and to care. Lord, help me to be merciful as you are merciful. And let us stand. And together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are called to recognize all people as our neighbor, especially people who are most in need. With confidence, we raise our prayers and our petitions to the God of love and mercy. That the church might build economic, uh, communal and interfaith relations, so to be the neighbor to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all civic leaders may work to abolish laws that do not promote a consistent ethical life from conception until final breath. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. That all first responders, paramedics, doctors, nurses, and all who offer comfort and healing may find support for their work within the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, for those who suffer during these trying times, for those who are joining us in prayer, both remotely and in person, and for all personal uh, mass intentions, we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers we raise today for us and for all our neighbors. We know you are merciful uh, and will answer these according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept that sacrifice at your hands, hands for, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, and grant her prayers uh, to you. Grant that, uh, that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by the sin and down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he is betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and gave you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer your Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Lee, our Bishop, with Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with all the saints to please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ taught us how to pray, so with courage we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace is granted peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of, God, of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed let us call the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
and let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. As we go forth today, we remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. We need to ask ourselves, who is our neighbor? And how will we put our faith into action? One way we can put our faith into action is by contributing to the CSA, the Catholic Stewardship Appeal. So if you have not made a contribution, we encourage you to do so. It helps us uh, with these TV Masses. And we pray for all of our homebound uh, that are uh, uh, at home during this time. We pray that the Lord will touch you with his healing hands. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our masses and the peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed week.